Smite reveals a new pantheon, new game, and new goddess. Paragon gets back into making new heroes. Conan Exile shows off its building, crafting, and destruction systems. And CES 2017 offers gaming of the future? What's up guys, James Blonde here, back in action after a little hiatus, recovering from the nightmare we know as 2016. I've had a lot of life-changing stuff happening lately that I've had to sort out, but now I'm back, missing you guys for way too long. 2017 is a brand new year and should be a fresh start, but it's definitely not going to be easy. As you guys know, I have a brand new full-time job now and my son is only weeks away from being born, so that's really exciting. But it has been and will continue to take up a ton of my time. But I'm going to do my best to keep up with the recap for you guys going forward. I just need as much support as I can get. In fact, I plan on setting up a Patreon so that way you guys that are able to support me, even if it's just a little bit, you can help me keep the videos flowing going forward. But with that being said, it is super awesome to be back, guys. Now for the news. Smite, of course, dominates the news this week with several recent announcements. As many of you may know, the 2017 Smite World Championships took place this week, January 5th through the 8th. And of course, hi res made it really easy to stay tuned in by streaming live on Twitch as part of the hi res Expo, or HRX 2017 as they like to call it. The PC teams were playing for a million dollar prize pool just like last year, and now we have an Xbox team who had their share of $150,000. Winning for the second time, we have NRG Esports on the PC side of things, taking home another $500,000 this year. But besides all the tournaments themselves, several announcements were made during the show, the first of which was their plan to launch a brand new Smite game called Smite Rivals. Now this game is a free-to-play, cross-platform, collectible card arena game. Some of you might notice where they got their inspiration from. <coughs> Clash Royale. But in this game, players will actually go one-on-one -on, -one on a three-laned battlefield using cars to deploy units in an attempt to take their opponent's tower. So yeah, a lot like Clash Royale, but with the smite gods and goddesses we know and love. So, hey, that's a plus. As players progress through the game, they'll be able to collect more cards and unlock new units, strategies, and playstyles. Now, the game will be free to play on PC and mobile devices, and developers are shooting for an effortless cross-platform transition, allowing players to switch between devices without losing any progress at all. Smite Rivals has no official launch date as of yet, it's still early, but it is set to release sometime this year. However, you can sign up at SmiteRivals.com and be one of the first to gain access as well as receive some extra rewards. As far as other Smite-related games, Smite Tactics, hi -Rez's turn-based strategy game, is now in closed beta as of this past week. With the graduation to closed beta, hi -Rez is adding the ability to purchase card packs now, along with brand new Founders Pack. The Founders Packs will include an exclusive Founders Icon and card back, the legendary leaders Poseidon, Isis, and Freya, legendary Inyo in Tactics skin for Bologna and Smite, 15 card packs, and more. These Founders Packs are available for sale at $20, but for a limited time, they are on sale for $15. Doesn't exactly say how long, so I'm assuming it's uh, a week or so. To purchase your Founders Pack, head over to SmiteTactics.com for more information. As far as the new season changes to Smite, this is a little bit older news, so I'll stick with the basics. We've got a revamp and update to the Clash map, new items, consumables, and balance changes, along with league splits and updates. The Clash map switched pantheons on us from Greek to Egyptian. That means new structures, statues, and a nice new background featuring the pyramids of Egypt. Clash is also seeing significant gameplay changes. So the Fire Giant and Gold Fury have been removed, and based on popular demand, the jungle has increased in size, with brand new walls directing players towards where all the action happens. In the center, where they face a brand new threat, Apophis, this awesome looking snake creature, cobra thing. Apophis is a brand new boss battle exclusive to the Clash map, and as the battle rages on, Apophis spawns, ready to give his favor to those who defeat him in combat. But I've got to say, it's uh, it's not going to be easy. Just saying. Moving on to the more recently revealed Smite news, coming January 10th, tomorrow, as part of the 3.25 patch, Smite introduces the new Celtic Pantheon, releasing a brand new goddess, the Morrigan, the Phantom Queen. As a Celtic-inspired mage, the Morrigan is actually multiple beings that share one single personality. Her abilities for the most part are fairly straightforward for a mage, but the decoy ability is pretty trolly and OP. 
I've got to say, her most noteworthy power, of course, is her ulti, and it's the ability to transform into any god in the match. Kind of like Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat. And by doing so, she's actually able to copy all of their current stats and abilities. So you could literally just pick the most fed player in the map and use it right back against them. It's pretty legit. Should be called multiple personality disorder instead of changeling, if you ask me. Developers say that she's going to be a challenge to master, even for the most seasoned of Smite players. Minus Sad Face and Bakerman Brad, of course, but Smite's new Celtic Pantheon is also being followed by its own Celtic-inspired event, Path of the Phantom Queen. Now, this event will be sort of like a board game that looks a hell of a lot like Jumanji, where players roll the dice, travel through the board game, completing quests and unlocking rewards, a lot like the Odyssey, where you unlock rewards such as new Celtic-inspired skins, an exclusive loading frame, and so much more. Twitch Prime members will gain access to the event for free, but if you aren't a Twitch Prime member, it's going to cost you a thousand gems to get in. But I have a feeling the rewards are well worth it. Speaking of split personalities, Paragon's latest hero, Serith, looks like she came straight from hell. <laughs> See what I did there? She looks like hell from Smite. Serith is a melee carry in Paragon who fights in melee range but actually uses her abilities to close distances quickly and keep enemies in range to unleash her fury. As an example, her first ability, Chastise, attacks an enemy dealing damage and applying a slow that also cleaves other nearby enemies. Her ultimate, on the other hand, Heresy, lets her dark side take over and all of her abilities now apply burn effects, which creates a weakness aura around enemies, making them ultra vulnerable in team fights, of course. Plus, any enemy burning also takes additional damage from Serith's basic attacks. It's been a little while since we saw a new hero. The new hero is available tomorrow, the 10th, for free in Paragon Open Beta. Check out more info linked in the description below. Also becoming available this week, a new patch for Overwatch. Overwatch brings us new hero balances, more user interface updates, bug fixes, and a brand new control map known as the Oasis. According to the new teaser trailer you see here, the map is set in the world's most advanced cities, a shining jewel rising from the Arabian Desert. The new patch has already been included on the PTR, so if you want to know how to join in on that, find out how to participate in game testing that is, check out their dev blog, otherwise expect to see this in-game really soon. And by the way, the new map is actually available now. Other interesting news, Funcom has released a brand new trailer showing off the building, crafting, and destruction systems in Conan Exiles. Looks to me like the building systems are extremely flexible, based on the new trailer you see here, making the game that much cooler to try out. Now, this game is still in early development, but ever since it was revealed several months ago, it's grabbed my attention, especially since I'm a huge Ark Survival Evolved fan. Still not sure if the game's going to be free to play? Probably not, but the cool news is PC Early Access is set for the 31st of this month. Definitely looking forward to that. Next up, following the recent launch of the Amazon Fury Part 3 episode in DC Universe Online, Daybreak Games has decided to extend its current promotion letting players play episodes 1 through 26 for free for an additional month. If you didn't know already, this has been going on for a little while now, since November 21st in fact. You can actually hop into DC Universe Online and get caught up on all of its episodic content without purchase, regardless of if you're a member or have previously purchased the episode. And all you need is the minimum combat rating of 43 and the required CR by each episode, of course, to advance through. You have until January 31st to play through all of the open episodes, minus the most current one, of course, Amazon Fury Part 3. I'd say that's a pretty decent free trial if you're ever interested in trying out the content in the game. On top of that, DCUO is celebrating their 6th anniversary on the 11th, which includes their Attack of the Anti-Monitor event. The event features new world missions, a new 8-player raid, new gear collections, and more, and the event is available now for all players. I want to check that out. Also from Daybreak Games, some bad news, I suppose. This past week, Daybreak Games has announced an official shutdown date for Landmark. Go figure. As of February 21st, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the game servers will shut down for good. Until then, player studio items will no longer be accepted for listing or purchase, and everything in the market will be easily accessible to anyone to try it out. After what happened with H1Z1 and EQ Next, I had a feeling this was coming, so not completely surprised here. It's too bad that stuff like this has to happen. Also this past week, we saw some really cool new tech showcased at CES 2017. Check this out. I mean, who needs this? A triple 4K G-Sync monitor laptop thing? That's silly. 
want it. Yeah, so Razer's new Project Valerie that you see here isn't the most practical laptop, I'd say, but it's really cool. But what's even cooler in my opinion, also introduced by Razer at the show, is Project Ariana. This amazing piece of gaming tech is a high-end projector that you set up to detect the environment around your gaming setup to project gameplay beyond what you just see on your monitors using Chroma to further immerse you into the game. As you can see, it's very legit. I thought it was cool. Check out more from the link in the description below, and let me know in the comments below which project from Razer you'd buy if you could. The Triple Monitor Laptop Project Valerie, or the Augmented Reality Projector Project Ariana. And if you're watching Razer, feel free to send me one of either or both. Another potentially cool piece of news coming from NVIDIA at the show, they've announced their new service, GeForce Now, giving PC and Mac users instant access to a virtual GeForce GTX 1080 gaming PC by using cloud-based technology. So by using this technology, players gain the experience of super smooth graphics, normally only obtained through upgrading their PCs, which can cost you over $700 just for the graphics card alone in some cases, if you're going for the 1080 that is. The only requirement with this is that your current Mac or PC has at least a 25 megabits per second internet connection, which is a lot more common than it used to be, and players can install their own games from the game store platforms like Steam or Origin and play them on either their Mac or PC, and early access is scheduled to begin in March, and early users will be selected from a first-come, first-served basis. Now, I know what you're thinking, there is absolutely no way a service like this is free, and I agree, it probably cost you a little bit. It's almost like renting a machine remotely, but it doesn't, definitely doesn't cost as much as building a new computer. However, so far, GeForce Now has not announced any sort of price or subscription fee, and are starting out with free early access to try it out. So sign up for early access waitlist and get a chance to be one of the first to experience it for free or just find out more information, visit geforce.com slash geforce now. Anyway guys, that's about it for all the major news and announcements this week. It's great to be back guys. Thanks for all of the support and don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Like always, pick up more information about the news feature in the recap from the description below and until next time guys, that's gonna be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.